Right, we might kick off. The title of this um, soiree <laughs> is Looking Back. And I know on the program it says 1985 to 2005. But for me, it's not 1985 to 2005. For me, it's 1965. 2005. For me, it's not 20 years, it's 40 years. Because when I was in, still in my 20s, I'm now 67 and feeling it. When I was in my 20s and uh, in the Bush Music Club in the 1960s, we used to come up here to Gulgong. Uh, we had what we called the concert party of the Bush Music Club and we used to sing on the street corners of Gulgon and I think it was the Australia Day weekend um, in January that we used to come up. So my memories go back to those days and I recall that on one of those very early occasions and it was probably the first occasion that we came up with the Bush Music Club in the 1960s and I said, well, we're going up there, the Gulgong, to sing Australian traditional songs on the street corners of Gulgong. I really should write a song about Gulgong. So I picked the Irish tune. Uh, in, uh, in Ireland, the tune goes up under a number of names. It's called Rosam the Bow, The Men of the West, the Gentle Maiden, and it's probably called three or four other things as well. And in Australia, the tune was used for a song called the Catalpa. So I use that tune for the Gulgong song. <laughs> Well, that was the Galgong song, the tune of Rosalind Bow and 
Jim and Maiden and the men of the West and the Qatar. Um, when we used to come up to Gulagong in the 1960s, on those Australia Day weekends, we used to sing the Australian traditional songs, which we love so much and which I still love so much. And one of them that we used to sing was the Dying Stop. genealogy. It's descended from an Anglo-Irish song um, where the protagonist is a, a, a lancer, a, a, a young soldier, a strapping young lancer lay dying. Um, and, and, he, and he wants to be wrapped up in death, the young lancer, the young soldier, wants to be wrapped up in things appropriate to his um, um, trade or calling as a soldier. And th this evidently really struck a chord in people's hearts. Because in Australia, he ceased to be a soldier and he became a stockman. And instead of wanting to be wrapped up in his old stable jacket, he wanted to be wrapped wrapped up in his stock whip and blanket and bury me deep down below where the dingoes and crows won't molest me in the shade where the cooler bars grow. The dying stock was so popular in Australia that it spawned a whole family of songs about people dying and who wanted to be buried in um, um, with articles or whatever it was appropriate to their trade. There was the dying bagman, the dying sleeper cutter, the dying airman, and I blush to say it, but there was also the dying heart. But they all, it, it, it all followed a path. But anyway, I'll, I'll do the dying stop. Please do it in the chorus. A dashing young stockman lay dying, his saddle supporting his head. His true mates surround him were sighing, as he raised on his elbow and said, Wrap me up in my stock whip and blanket, and bury me deep down below. Where the dingoes and crows can't molest me, in the shade where the cool of us There's tea in the old battered billy, place Pannington's all in the row. We'll drink to the next merry meeting. I'm going where good stock and go. Wrap me up in my stock whip and blanket. And bury me deep down below Where the dingoes and crows can't molest me In the shade where the cool of us grow Cut down a couple of saplings Place one at my head and my toe Carve on them cross stock whip and saddle to show there's a stockman below. Wrap me up in my stock whip and blanket and bury me deep down below. Where the dingoes and crows can't molest me in the shade where the cool of us grow. Oh, had I the flight of a bronze wing, far from these plains I would Back to the home of my childhood 
And there I would lay down and die Wrap me up in my stomach and blanket And bury me deep down below Where the dingoes and crows can't bless me In the shade where the cool of hearts grow Now, as I just pointed out, that song is a member of a family. Or if you like, one link in a chain, if you want me to change the metaphor. Um, I thought that I might add one link to the chain. And uh, I thought I might write a song called The Dying Treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> and the... And the uh, I, I wrote it at the time when our present Prime Minister, John Howard, was the treasurer in the Fraser government. Remember that? Yeah. They're all very unhappy. Yeah. 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 Yes, but here we go. A federal treasurer lay dying, his budget supporting his head. The cabinet stood lucidly lying. As he raised on his elbow and said, Wrap me up in my jiggery pokery, Wrap me round in my ledger domain, Bury me deep in the rhetoric, Right next to the monetary drain. Ledger domain is sleight of hand. I won't sing the whole thing, I'll just sing part of it. There's booze in the cut glass decanter. Place tumblers all in a row. We'll toast more and more unemployment. Make the total continue to grow. Wrap me up in my jiggery pokery. Wrap me round in my ledger domain. Bury me deep in the rhetoric, right next to the monetary drain. And you will recall that when singing the dying stockman, I sang, Oh, had I the flight of a bronze wing, far from these plains I would fly. But the dying treasurer says, Oh, had I the flight of an emu, I desperately run round and round and try to soar into the sunset and never get up off the ground. Wrap me up in my jiggery pokery, wrap me round in my ledger domain, bury me deep in the rhetoric, right next to the heart. He's like venereal disease, Jenny. You never get rid of him. <laughs> I'm raising him up. It can only be either. Can you say something? Now, one, one, one of the people who used to come up here to Gulgong with us, and a very dear friend of mine, was a, was a black man, Jamie Carr. Who knows Jamie Carr? There's a few people who know Jamie. Yeah, you know Jamie. I was here that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 12. And, and, the, really old. and, this, and this bloke who's speaking here is the brother of a bloke who used to come up here and play with us on the street corners in Gullwong in the 1960s. Are you see? Yeah, well, in 1966, this is looking back, in 1966, I went out to Waverley Cemetery with Jamie Carl. Easter, 1966. Why did we go to Waverley Cemetery? Henry Lawson's grave. No. Who was there? Who was there? 
That girl can have an early night. 1966 was the 50th anniversary of the Easter Rebellion in Dublin, which was not only a critical time in Ireland's history, it was a critical time in Australia's history. Because just after the Easter Rising in Dublin, the Prime Minister of Australia, Billy Bloody Hughes, thank you for that, <laughs> called a referendum on conscription, thinking that the Australian people would rally behind the first AIF and vote for conscription because the Australian casualties in France and Flanders were so horrendous that they couldn't keep the army supplied with men through uh, volunteers. That's what Billy Hughes thought. And he probably would have got away with it but for the Easter Rebellion. And Catholics in Australia in those days were of overwhelming Irish descent and they voted no. And not only did they vote no, but to Billy Hughes' chagrin, a large proportion of the first AIF in France and Flanders voted bloody no. <laughs> he tried it again in 1917 and was defeated again. But that day at Waverley Cemetery in 1966 with Jamie Carl was a wonderful day because in, in Waverley Cemetery there is a tomb to the Irish martyrs, a magnificent tomb. And buried under that tomb are the bones of one of the heroes of the 1798 Rising, I allude to Michael Dwyer, who is known in Irish history as the Wicklow Chief. Michael Dwyer is revered in Ireland and he's buried at Waylow. <laughs> really? Would you like to come out and take over? <laughs> That's not, that's not a bad family connection. Michael Dwyer in Irish history is known as the Wicklow Chief. And he was buried originally in Sydney. He was buried at the Devonshire Street Cemetery. And in the 1890s, they destroyed those graves to build Central Station. But some of the graves, most of the graves were just destroyed. But some of the graves were moved to Waverley. And they moved... Mickey Dwyer's bones to Waverley and they built the magnificent monument to the Irish martyrs over Mickey Dwyer's bones. And I was out there that day in 1966 when they, when they commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Easter Rising. And there were 5,000 people in Waverley Cemetery. 5,000 people. So I came home and I wrote, Who gave Australia the tunes to sing? To the tune of Roddy McCauley, or as the young Irish, the young Irish have another name for it, the Sean South of Gary Allen, but it's still Roddy McCauley. And the Irish didn't only give us the tunes of so many of our folk songs, they gave us, I believe, so many of the best aspects of our national character. Suspicion of police. <laughs> Insatiable thirst. Yes. Love of gambling. Yes. All those wonderful <coughs> But if you pick up any collection of Australian folk songs, so many of the songs have Irish tunes. All the Bushranger songs have Irish tunes. 
not most, all. Who gave Australia the tunes to sing? The tunes of songs so grand. Songs to inspire, full of beauty and fire. The answers I have had. No, when you sing of Jack Donahue, he was a Dublin man. And Dennis O'Reilly is travelling still with a black thorn in his hand. Who raised a ruckus at Castle Hill? Who led the fight the crown? Twas the same rebel boys who in 98 against odds would not lie down. Oh, but they made Samuel Marsden fret and they ruffled the silver tails. Why, the words croppy pike were enough to strike fear. Into New South Wales. Who agitated the Ballarat for Joe Latrobe's death knell? Who as it raised up the five star flag and then the traps to hell? Who as it gathered beneath that flag where Solemn Olds were sworn Who would not run from the red coat's gun Upon Eureka Horn Ned Kelly's dad was an Irish lad The Kellys all died game Brave Michael Dwyer's bones are buried here We'll not forget that name who could resist Larry Foley's fist and Foley wore the green? And who led the anti-conscription ranks in 1917? And who gave us yeah, the tunes to sing, the tunes of songs so grand? Songs to inspire, full of beauty and fire, the answers I have had. No, when you sing of Jack Donahue, that he was a Dublin man, and Dennis O'Reilly is travelling still with a black thorn in his hand. <laughs> I was busking outside DJ's one day and playing a verse, singing a verse, and I sang, Meg Kelly was born in a ramshackle hut. He battled since he was a kid. He grew up with bad men and duffers and thieves, and he learnt all the things that they did. A bloke came up to me and he said, If I were you, I should not be singing songs glorifying criminals. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and if I were you, I should be watching my tongue. My mother's a Kelly! <laughs> but we know who the criminals are. Ned was a gentleman. Now, poets' breakfast are now an integral part of folk festivals. But it was in Gulgon, I believe, that Poets' Breakfast first kicked off. Because it, it was in the, one of those very early 1980s folk festivals that we, we had the first Poets' Breakfast, I think, that I'd ever heard. And I'd been to a lot of folk festivals before that. And I'm reading from my notes, I'm, I'm reading, it says, It's fair to say the concept was pioneered here. Henry Lawson will always be associated with this town. 
So I think it's appropriate that poets' breakfasts were pioneered in the town that is associated with Henry Lewis. And this is my favourite Henry Lawson poem, Scots of the Riverina. And it's set in Gundigai. And I love it because it's a wonderful poem and because Henry Lawson wrote it. But I also love it because my mother came from Gundigai. Except in my mother's case, they weren't the Scots of the Riverina, they were the Irish. <laughs> But the poem goes like this. And Lawson wrote it late in World War I. And he died not many years later. Lawson died in 1922. So that was only a few years after World War I. The boy ran away to the city at the height of the harvest time. They were Scots of the Riverina. And to run from home was a crime. The old man burned his letters. The first and the last he burned. And he scratched his name from the Bible while the old wife's back was turned. A year went by and another. The news came down the line. They'd heard the boy had enlisted. The old man gave no sign. His name must never be mentioned on the farm near Gundagai. A Scot of the Riverina and ever the Kirk hard by. The boy came home on his final leave. The township's bonfires burned. His mother's arms were about him. But the old man's back was turned. His sisters begged and pleaded till the old man raised his hand. A Scot of the Riverina and hard to understand. The boy was killed in Flanders where the best and the bravest died. There were tears in the Graham homestead and grief in Gundagai, and the old man ploughed at daybreak. The old man ploughed to the murk. There were furrows of pain in the orchard when the family went to Kirk. The hurricane lamp in the rafters dimly and dimly burned. And the old man died at the table while the old wife's back was turned, face down, with his bare arms folded, he sank with his wild white hair. And in the family Bible, a name rewritten. Again, I read from my notes. I will always associate this town with Bobby Campbell. Bobby Campbell is one of my best friends, and I know a lot of the people, you people here, also count Bobby Campbell as a friend. Bobby can't be here for this festival. He's he's up in um, Queensland, but um, what do they call it? Woodford. 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 He's, he's doing a a program to commemorate Jack O'Kevitt, our old mate Jack O'Kevitt. Otherwise he'd be. Now Bobby Campbell and his band Home Rule were at the heart of Gulgong festivals for many years. But before coming to Gulgong to teach at the local high school, Bobby was a union organiser in Newcastle. And in the early 1970s, the Newcastle Trades and Labour Council ran an annual songwriting competition. Now, I usually don't go into songwriting competitions, basically I don't believe them. But I used to go into Blues and I won that competition in either 1972 or 1973. 
with this song. Bill from Erskineville. I'm pleased to meet you, my name's Bill. I'm working in a factory at Erskineville. You have to crawl and conditions are a crime. But you get a few dollars worth of overtime. Hooray, ain't life grand. I'm saving the deposit on the block of land. on your bill. You save up and buy your block of land. You still have to borrow some money. I met a fella selling real estate. He's running from the coppers in another state. And he's the friend of a generous gent who's lending money at 20%. Hooray, life's a lark. I'm swimming in the water with a finance shark. Bill, get yourself down to Rose Hill Racecourse. A couple of certainties today there, Bill. Licence to print money. I had a couple of dollars on a short-priced horse running in a welter on the Rose Hill course. But too much weight and too little pace and the bugger finished twelfth in a twelve horse race. Hooray, faithful nag, ferrying the money to the bookies bag. Bill, you're too impetuous. Get yourself down to the RSL club. Think about things. Get things into perspective. Have a couple of schooners or two he's old. While you're down there, you might pull a jackpot in the pokies. I had a little flatter on the poker machines, and I won a dollar forty when it paid three queens. So I chases the aces around the reels. Now I can't afford the money to pay for meals. Hooray, feed the slot. Push up on the button till you lose the lot. When I first wrote the song, it was haul upon the handle till you lose the lot. Now you push buttons instead of pulling the handle, but you get the same result. <laughs> Lottery tickets, Bill! Go for the big one, Bill! Lottery tickets have me up shit creek. I was 20 off a five dollar prize last week. The tires on me car all worn through. And the registration's overdue. Hooray, hip hurrah, for a worn out second hand olden car. Bill, this is a two income society. Get your missus out of work, Bill. I says to me wife, we've reached the stage where we cannot manage on a single wage. Now she pulls beer in the pub saloon and the kids run wild of an afternoon. Hooray, name your brand. I am drinking the deposit on the block of land. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. My name's Bill. I've been sacked from the factory in Erskineville. Well, if it hasn't been for Bobby Campbell, that song would have never been written. So that's another of my associations with this town. I'll jump the 1990s. In 1996, I camped at Paddy's farm. Any Golgong locals here? There were Golgong locals, I know where it was. Out on the edge of Golgong, 
and I can tell you, I'll tell you a little bit of a story about it in a minute. I camped there for the best part of a week, and there I recorded the CD, The Follies of Pollocks. The home rule musicians, Bobby's band, added instrumentation and vocals through the magic of multi-tracking. I can't sell you one of those CDs. They were all sold many years ago. But I do have, um, uh, actually, you mate, you mate he's got a, <laughs> a few copies of the, of the next, um, they're not CDs, are they, mate? This, well, they will find out. They're CDs, they're CDs. John Lev gave Australian son, but I, but I digress, I'm not trying to sort people. <laughs> yeah, we made, we made the CD, The Follies of Pollies, in this town, out of Paddy's farm. That, uh, Bobby's mates had a, a recording studio in the bloody house. And I, I used to get up in the morning, and Bobby was in Germany at the time, but one of his mates in the band um, said, well, what do you want to record, John? So I told him, oh, such and such a song. He said, well, you put it down, you sing it and play your guitar accompaniment. He said, and uh, then go up to the centennial and have a few guinnesses and come back and listen to what I've done with it. <laughs> no one ever had so much fun making a CD. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem was one night I got lost between the centennial and Paddy's <laughs> And it was the middle of winter and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this was 1996 that we made the CD, The Follies of Pollies. Um, tell me what happened in 1996. No, it's too sad. <laughs> Sorry? Too sad. It is too sad, mate. Yeah, it is too sad. Paul Keating got done. Paul, Paul <laughs> Keating got done. And little Johnny Howard got elected, which buggered up the title track of the CD. <laughs> this was the title track of the CD. To the tune of You Have a Long Ball, The Follies of Pollies. Oh, the follies of pollies are simply a rot. I'm no longer certain which side to support. I voted for Labor through thick and through thin Perhaps I'm to blame for the mess that we're in Paul Keating's a bastard all swollen with pride And that's from a putter who votes for his side I want to republic but Keating's so mean I feel just Twinge of support for the Queen. <laughs> How do you twinge? <laughs> it seems that Australia is under a curse. The government's crook and the Liberals are worse. John Howard would be better off digging drains. My son's German Shepherd has more bloody brains. <laughs> And damn Bronwyn Bishop's a petulant hag She reminds me of Otto von Bismarck in drag <laughs> I'm not going to linger until it's too late If she becomes leader I'm going to migrate But back to Paul Keating, God what have we done? To wind up with Bankstown's most arrogant son The one thing we've got to be grateful about Is as long as he's in there, the others are out <laughs> The others weren't out for very long Well, that was the CD of Paddy's Farm, out on the edge of Gullion. Um, I learnt this song, the next song I'm going to sing, from an old Gullion resident. Who, who knows Frank Pover? There's a few hands up. Yeah. Frank Pover was an old Gullion resident, and during the, the first 
few festivals. He, he was part of them. He was a wonder, Frank was a wonderful blues guitarist. But he was also uh, an expert on Australian Aboriginal folklore and on Australian flora and fauna. He's a wonderful bloke, Frank. He came to my place in Glee and we were out on the balcony and we were drinking tea because Frank wouldn't mind me telling him that he had a problem with the booze, so we were drinking tea. <coughs> and uh, he said to me, do you get many of the native birds here in Glee? Australian native birds. I said, oh mate, we get bagpies and kookaburras and, and, uh, and so forth. But I, I, I said, we don't get the little native birds because they've been chased away by the bull bulls and, um, and the Indian miners. And Frank said, well, there's a silver eye in that tree. I said, oh, cut. Frank, that's a sparrow. <laughs> he said, how long since you got those glasses changed? <laughs> so I went to the optometrist and all these silver eyes came back to good. <laughs> <laughs> While Frank was at my place, he, um, yeah, while Frank was at my place, I said to him, Frank, teach me a nice blues song. I don't, I don't know many blues songs. And, uh, I'd like to sort of branch out of it into the blues. So he taught me, nobody watching when you're down and in your pockets, never a penny. As to your friends, well, you haven't any. Then you get back on your feet again. Everybody wants to be a long lost friend. It's very true, there isn't a doubt. Nobody wants you when you're down and down. I said, oh, thank you, Frank, that's lovely. And then Frank left my place and I rang him up about a week later. I said, hey, Frank, you know that song you taught me? He said, yes. <laughs> I said, I've written a new set of words to you. He said, you just couldn't leave it alone, could you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so to the tune of um, Nobody Wants You When You're Down and Out, I wrote the Skin Cancer Blues. The skin cancer blues is part of medical medley and the other parts of medical medley are because I neglected dental hygiene and the rectal bleeding calypso. <laughs> but I'll spare you those and just, just do you the, the skin cancer blues. Um, um, any, any of, when I finished here uh, with this the workshop, any ladies who want to come up and check me for scars, I've got, there's more of me at the skin cancer clinics than there is here. Only the ladies? That's wishful thinking. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. That's wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Once I had the skin of a newborn child, rosy and pink and undefined. My blue eyes sparkle like the morning dew And on my cheeks just a freckle or two Out in the sun with never a care Back and belly and head all bare No sunscreen, no shirt, no shoes And now I'm singing those skin cancer blues Oh, it's no Miss Noma Singing the solar melanoma blues Sixty summers of Australian heat And now I'm headed for the quarry street Clutching my referral Bus defer to the medical call It's very true there isn't a doubt They burn and freeze and scrape and cut them out Hope 
they're not malignant. I get indignant if I hear that word. Doctor says, son, you'll be fine. Those maggots on your back, well, they're all benign. Be a sensible chap, though. Buy yourself a petite chapel. That's a little hat. If I keep the bucket, don't blame the booze. Send me to salvation with the stick and the blue. Oh, it's no misnomer. Singing the soul of melanoma blues. Sixty summers on the Australian heat. And now I'm headed for my quarry street. I'm clutching. My referral must defer to the medical code. It's very true, there isn't a doubt. They burn and freeze and scrape and cut their You walk past the school, the primary school in Sydney, there's all these poor little hasty faced children with their hats on and their pure white skin. No ray of sunshine ever touches their skin. It's true, they won't get skin cancer, but they will all die of vitamin D deficiency. <laughs> Oh, you win some of yours. <coughs> okay, I'm up. I'm into, I'm into the present. I'm up to now. When we used to sing those songs on the street corners in Dulgong back in the 1960s. One of the songs we used to sing was um, the Knickerbocker Line, which we learned from Duke Tritton. And another, another song we sang to the same tune, but in a, in a different tempo, was Lachlan Tigers. Well, I've used that tune, but came, the tune came to Australia as, um, uh, I think as a Knickerbocker Line, and I've used it for a song called The Terrorist Song. As I was walking down the street, he suddenly appeared. A bloody turban Muslim with a big bin I asked, are you a terrorist? Is that your flame and lurk? He said, no, I'm a carpenter. I'm on my way to work. <laughs> I watched him, tracked him, rang up AZO. I dogged him into Alan Jones on talkback radio. <laughs> I may not be a beauty and I don't have any sense. But by God, I know my duty to the national defense. They're going to bomb the harbor bridge, then quiet as a mouse. They'll sneak up with explosives and blow up the opera house. <laughs> They're going to blow up Murphy's pub. I've heard about the plot. I hope they get the pokies, cause I'm losing quite a lot. <laughs> There's terrorism everywhere, it makes a man afraid. I'm buying a machine gun and I'll build a barricade. You'll have to know the password if you come to visit me. Shoot first, ask questions later, mate, that's my philosophy. My auntie May's eccentric, 
You're paranoid, she said. She doesn't believe the terrorists are underneath the bed. She reckons it's hysteria. I don't know what she meant. She said she's far more frightened of the federal government. John Howard will protect us. He's very strong and brave. He's passing legislation that will make you all behave. You won't be facing Mecca on that silly bloody mat. You'll all be Church of England and they'll cogitate on that. Watch them, track them, bring up AZO. Dwell them into Alan Jones on talkback radio. I may not be a beauty and I don't have any sense. But by God I know my duty to the national defense. All right, we get near the end. Um, one of the great things about having Kim Beasley come back to lead the Labour Party is that I can sing the Kim Beasley song again. <laughs> Now, I, I did have a, a song for Kim Beasley's predecessor, Mark Layton. I had a Mark Layton song. The, the bit of the Mark Layton song I can remember is, um, He pays for a cab with a wild time left jab. The drivers all whimper and cower. Though he breaks the autumn, that's part of his charm. He's where is Delhi. He's a delicate bloom, though his fists might go boom, when he's drunk or his temper turns sour. If you get in a brawl with a bloke with one ball, it's where rivers delicate flower. <laughs> so this is the Kim Beasley song, and we'll finish up with this. Right up there, he's coming in to do his bit. Whenever I think of Kim Beasley, I'm trouble controlling my mirth. Of all party leaders, he's easily the greatest in size and in girth. When he uploops in the morning, he wallows around in the tub. He is just like a blue whale spawning, or is it a Collins class up? <laughs> Please, Kim, get slim. Paul was a bastard, but Gigi was trim. Kim, wait, lose weight. Sign up for a course in the gym. John Howard is piddling and little. He's too small to captain the team. But Kim, your credentials are brittle. For you are the other extreme. A PM should not be a midget. We look to a stature increase. But Kim, pay attention, don't fidget. Let's face it, you're bloody obese. Please, Kim, get slim. Paul was a bastard, but Gigi was trim. Kim, mate, lose weight. Sign up for a course in the gym. Thank you, everybody. That's looking back on 40 years of Gulgong and associated members. Thank you for coming. Is there any truth to the rumour that this is the last Gulgong festival? No good talking to me. You've got to talk to the officers, not the enlisted bit. <laughs> Yeah, 
you've got CDs to sell with those who have got too much money. <laughs> and a quick, and a quick 